SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. So I'm Kumar Patel. I'm uh, founder and CEO of a company called Pranalytica. It's located in uh, Santa Monica. And uh, we uh, are in the business of uh, uh, carrying out research and development in the area of quantum cascade lasers, as well as sensors, gas sensors for industrial, as well as uh, defense and homeland security applications. I got my PhD from Stanford University in 1961. My PhD dissertation was not on lasers. Lasers had just come on the horizon, so, so it's, it's obvious that, that as a graduate student, I didn't have the opportunity to work on it. But when I went to Bell Labs, um, of course, at, uh, at that time, there were only two kinds of lasers that had been made to operate. First was the ruby laser, and the second one was the helium-neon laser at 1.5 microns. And of course, uh, with that, if you go back in history, you, you'll find that, that for a long time it was thought that if you wanted to make a gas laser, you had to find a combination of gases, in this case helium and neon, such that we could transfer energy from one gas to another, another gas to create laser action in that other gas. Now, if, if, you, if you limit yourself to that kind of boundary conditions, there are very few combinations you can find. As a matter of fact, there are maybe three or four combinations of that kind. Um, so one of my first things that, that, that I did was that, that, that I, I went around disproving that, that, that you had to have two gases. And so the, uh, I took all the helium out of the helium-neon laser, and the laser still worked. Of course, that was a clear indication that, 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 that the original notion wasn't quite right. And of course, that led to, uh, I'll call it an explosion of available laser lines from gas lasers, going from five laser lines in about mid-1961 to something close to 1,000 by the time, but by the end of 1962. The biggest problem with gas lasers, or any laser, is not getting the system to produce laser action, but how to remove the unnecessary heat that is generated at the same time. So you've got to do two things, minimize that heat and somehow find a clever way of taking it away. Clever way of taking it away, gas is the ideal medium. You can always flow the gas, you can do all kinds of things so that the medium is constantly being replenished. For uh, going to a system which has very small amount of waste heat, you clearly had to then ask a different question. Until that time, all the gases were in atomic systems like helium, neon, argon, and so on. Um, those gases are, are notorious for making a small amount of laser, the laser, the, the laser action and a lot of, lot of waste energy. So uh, I, I looked at uh, molecular lasers, molecular systems, and one of the first systems I looked at what was carbon dioxide. You can ask why carbon dioxide. I, I had convinced myself that a diatomic system like CO will never work. I, I turned out to be wrong. So, so the, eventually, that's, uh, I had to prove myself that that was wrong too. But CO2 was, was a system which was, in many ways, an ideal four level laser system. And the first time we tried it worked. That's when uh, we went from tens of milliwatts from CO2 to a watt level power output from nitrogen CO2. And that's the note that I wrote to my, my, my assistant. And I still have a copy of that note, which says, Rudy, last night, I think around 2 AM, I got 3 quarters of a watt. And I wanted to do something else to, to, to set up the system next morning, because I, having stayed that long, I, will, I wasn't going to come in there that early. I still have a copy of the note. And I think it, it's been reproduced many times in many publications uh, as that note, because that was the first time any laser went past 100 milliwatts of power. Those years from early 60s at Bell Labs. I think th th those were unique years um, for two reasons. One, the uh, um, country had, was recoiling from the uh, uh, Sputnik problems of 57. So the country had put a lot of money into, into education, especially physics and engineering education. And so really outstanding people were coming out at that time. It was a great time because uh, uh, the country believed that technology was, at least at that time, solution to many of the problems that had piled up. Of course, that in this particular case, it was our relationship with the Soviet Union. And so the, unless you were really stupid, you couldn't do anything wrong. 
and, and I think, I think that as time went on, clearly the uh, people began to realize that technology is only a part of the problem. There is a lot of other things that you need to do to solve the, 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 to solve to solve all the pro, all the problems. Um, so that and, and one of the great things that that that, that Bell Labs was good for was um, it um, promoted people who are technically sound, not people who could speak well or people who could uh, present themselves well, but people who had good technical judgment. And that people had to prove because they had to choose their own topic and show that it it, it, was, it was in fact successful. Um, so I, I got into management very early in 1967. Um, that's before my 30th birthday. To, 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 and and, and uh, one, of the, one of the things that Bell Labs is known for is, or management is known for, is truly smart people they were able to hire. We got judged, as a manager, we got judged not by what you had done in the past in terms of technology or what you would do in the in future in technology, but how many people you have hired who are smarter than you. Now that's a, you know, that, that, that's a, that's a very tall order, but the moment you, you think about this for a second, what it tells you that this is a system that constantly ratchets itself up in quality, as opposed to ratcheting itself down if, a management, if the manager is afraid of the person that he hires as being smarter than him, him or her. Uh, I'm very happy to say that, that uh, uh, probably I have the unique uh, distinction within Bell Labs management of, hired, of having hired a large number of people, of whom six people got Nobel Prizes. So six, six people I, I hired personally eventually got Nobel Prizes. So, so clearly, I mean, at least if nothing else, I, 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 I fulfilled the, the, the requirement of, of being in management at Bell Labs. 